Good morning, Rock Church. My brothers and sisters on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, it's a delight to be with you this marvelous Monday. Good morning to each and every one of you all. I pray that this word will go forth. Good afternoon for some of you all who normally come on in the afternoon. And I like to say good evening for some of you all who comes on on the evening time. I don't, I don't want you to think I don't know you're watching. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in and how faithful you've been. Not to me, but to the word of God. You ought to say amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you on this marvelous Monday. We love you. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for Jesus who died for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who's the comforter, who's here with us. God, I pray that your word will resonate within our hearts and our minds, that we will be compelled to action. May you be glorified because of my response unto your word this day. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. He tells us we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm rejoicing because God has a ram of word this morning for us. Boy, it's going to help you and bless you, okay? Hey, listen, let me tell you something. You know these, these phrases and these sayings that we say, right? And uh, sometimes we, we think these phrases are in the Bible. They sound good, but they're actually not. I'm going to give you a phrase that I use personally. Boy, and it is destroyed me in a way, <laughs> in a good way. So this marvelous Monday, the phrase we're going to talk about this morning is God knows my heart. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Have you ever used that phrase before? Man, God knows my heart. God know my heart. He know my heart. Man, I used to use that phrase all the time. And that phrase I use is because it was actually an excuse for me to sin. Yeah. God know my heart. Yeah, right. See, I was studying the Bible, man. Shoot, man, about 27 years ago. I've been a Christian 27 years now. And I remember the first time sitting down with a brother. He was studying the Bible with me. And, man, we were, I, I was enjoying myself. And then we started talking about sin, okay, what sin is, what sin does, sin or mission, sin or commission. And he started telling me because of my sin, I was separated from God. Now, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't like that he said that, okay? And so uh, I was trying to convey to this person that I was a good person. I was a good person, brothers and sisters. Hey, man, listen. But he confronted me with the word of God. And I told him, I said, man, God know my heart, right? Although I may have done a little sin, but I'm a good person. I mean well, Okay? I help people out every now and then, okay? Listen, man, listen. I, I, I go to church on holidays. I'm good. Well, he said, listen, Brother Rob, I want to tell you something, man. I want to tell you something, man, that I believe that that's going to change your life. But it's not me telling you. It's going to be you reading the heart of God. Sister Johnson, what's up, girl? I ain't seen you in a while. And so, and so I said, okay, okay, okay. He said, I said, so I want to help you out, man. I want to help you out. And then guess what? I want you to go help other people out too, though. Because if you're walking around using this phrase that God knows your heart, I'm about to enlighten you with what Jesus is saying about our heart. I want y'all to turn your Bibles over to Matthew 15, verse 18 and 19. That's the remnant word found on this marvelous Monday. And boy, let me tell you, let me just say what Jesus said. Y'all don't be trying to judge me now. Because you know, based on the word of God, it's true. It's inerrant. And he said this. Jesus said, what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. I, watch this now. Y'all got to get this. Out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, selfish, mean sexual immorality, theft, false witness, Slander. <laughs> what? When I read that, I was dumbfounded. I was convicted. See, according to Jesus, no one sins in spite of having a clean heart. See, this clean heart I was talking about, I had a good heart. 
You don't sin because you got a good heart. On the contrary, our sins are evidence of having an impure heart. That's right. Jesus was telling the Pharisees, he says, listen, even in Jesus' time, I thought when I was studying the Bible, man, I'm good. No, this is not something that is uh, 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 it's new. Uh, having a bad heart is something that's been a part of the world. Come on, somebody. Man, I can tell you, man, Adam and Eve, something was wrong with their heart. God told them not to eat from the fruit. Okay, Cain and Abel. Hey, man, listen, there are many stories in the Bible we can see for ourselves that these having a bad heart is for real. Okay? And so when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, he wanted them to understand, hey, man, listen, there's something that's going on in your heart. But the Pharisees wanted people to think they were good from the outside, okay? Hey, man, that they, were, that, that they had it all figured out. But Jesus exposed them, right? Jesus says something in Matthew 23. He says, Jesus said to them, your, your, your cup was like, your cups were clean on the outside, but filthy on the inside, okay? He said, listen, yeah, this cup look good, right? Okay, but it's on the outside, it's clean, but inside of it is nasty. He was telling them about their heart. Then Jesus says something else about their heart. He says, listen, in Matthew 23, in verse 27, he says, whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people, bones, and all uncleanliness. What? This is what Jesus was saying to the Pharisees. He was saying, y'all look beautiful on the outside, but inside you like dead man bones. That's the heart. So, so, so here they believed, but they believed that they can do and have good motives and they'd be okay. Brothers and sisters, no, that's not the case. So when I was studying the Bible, man, and this brothers was showing me this, I was getting convicted because I was realizing my heart is terrible, man. Man, listen here. Here it is, man. Let me ask you something. Are you ready to release your faith this marvelous Monday knowing that, listen, what's on the outside does not always reflect what's going on on the inside. See, I remember these days. I remember when I used to use profanity. And man, listen, hey, when I was called on it, I used to say, man, God know my heart. Yeah, yeah, because the heart is a place which, which profanity comes out of. Yeah, man, I remember I was shacking up, right? I was shacking up with this girl, man. She was my girlfriend, the whole nine yards. And when I was confronted with the fact that I was shacking up and I wasn't married, immorality, I said, man, God knows my heart. Yeah, that heart that God knows is shacking up with immorality, right? Oh, yeah, 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 doing the other things I ain't got no business doing. And then when I was confronted with the thing that, you know, hey, God, God, God know, hey, my heart that relates to my giving. Yeah, man, I go to church, man. And when time the offering time came, man, hey, I wouldn't even think about giving 10% because God knew my heart. I can give him a little bit because God got all the money. So he don't need no money. God knew my heart. Yeah, my heart was cheap. So what are you saying, Pastor Rob? I'm saying, listen, that phrase, we talking about God know our hearts, and you think we're going to be okay with that? No, brothers and sisters. <laughs> no, man, we got to keep it simple, saints. We got to start doing what? We got to do two things. We got to examine our actions and our the things that we say, right? We need to examine that because our heart is what everything flows out of it, brothers and sisters. Everything flows out of what we say in, in our actions. And let me, let, me, let me show you how we can do this. Let me show you how we can become brothers and sisters, men and women, sons and daughters, to begin to have a heart transplant. Okay, it's found in Psalms 51. You can read the whole Psalms. But there are four verses I want to deal with this morning. Verse 1 and 2 in verse uh, five verses, verse one and two, and verse ten through uh, twelve. I want to. I want us to look at. Look at David's heart that relates to the heart. Man, if we can do this. If you can, if you can ask God this every day, say, "Listen, okay. Here's what David said. Verse one: Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant uh, abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions." Here, David was saying, "Listen, look. I I, I realize my." iniquities. I realize my bad heart. 
please have mercy on me. So humility will help you with your bad heart. So God, I, I know there are some things in my heart I don't want nobody else to see, right? I don't, I'm doing stuff I don't want nobody else to see. I'm doing it in the dark, okay? Hey, man, listen, if you're doing it in the dark, it's going to be revealed in the light. It may not be revealed in the light while we're here on earth, but the light, the day that judgment comes, God's going to reveal it to us. Come on. He said, look, man, hey, man, God, you can do this because your, your, your love is steadfast. It, it, it moves. It don't stop. He says, according to your abounded mercy, blot out my transgressions. He got some, God, I know I got transgressions. Okay. He said, number two, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. Just like you wash your clothes in a washing machine. You don't want half of you put, you add soap to it. You add fabulous softener to it. You want them clothes to be washed thoroughly. You want details to be happening. You want clean clothes. Same thing that David said, I want a clean heart. He says, cleanse me from my sin. We got to face our reality that we are sinful people having a spiritual experience. David said, if you, David, David said it, how much more should we say it? And then verse 10 says, creating me a clean heart. You, we can't clean our heart. God has to do it. We have to ask God and we have to do what he says in order for the heart to be cleansed. He says, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Therefore, if you got a bad, dirty heart, you're going to have a bad, dirty spirit. You won't have the spirit of the Lord working in you. You have the spirit of the enemy at work in you. Okay, he says, now in verse 11, cast me not away from your presence. Because when we are in a place of sinning, we are not in the presence of God. God is not a part of our sinful actions. Okay? You got to see, say, look, look, if you keep living the way that you're living and respond the way that you respond, you can believe that the presence of the Lord is not on you or in that. Okay? He says, but please don't, don't cast me away. I want to be with you. He says, watch this and take not your Holy Spirit from me. He said, I don't want to be without the spirit of the Lord present in my life. See what happens when we have a bad heart. I am telling you, man, you are not functioning in the spirit of the Lord. You may be thinking you are because you deceive. That's what Satan, when he wants to deceive us and think that God is present when we are sinning. No, he's not. God ain't putting up with that foolishness. Watch this. In verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Come on, somebody. Boy, you can first understand where you were at, and then God said, this is where you need to be. David said, I, I want to be restored, the joy of your salvation. He says, watch this. He says, he says, and uphold me with a willing spirit to do what? To follow, to be what he called us to be, to go where he called us to go. And we use phrases like God knows my heart as though we can get away with stuff. That is the wrong way of thinking. David said, no, man. He laid this thing out so pretty in the scriptures. If we just examine these scriptures and take these in and imitate David's faith and his humility, what would we be like? We would have clean heart. We won't be like washroom wash, uh, wash tombs, brothers and sisters. We, we, we won't look good on the outside, but on the inside, we like dead man bones. May you see God's word and, and embrace it. If it was happening in Jesus' time, he called the Pharisees out. How much more he's, he's showing us today? We can see... <laughs> If hearts are bad or good, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not rocket science. It's biblical. So I want you to examine your heart today. I want you to go back to read this Psalms 51, 1 through 2, verse 1 and 2, and verse 10, 11, and 12. And imitate what David said and see what happens. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for the realm of word this marvelous Monday. We thank you, God, that... Your reality is real in the word of God. Jesus was clear. Even James talked about, if we draw near to God, you would draw near to us. 
James it says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Oh God, I pray that we will see ourselves to be humble, have humility, God, to face into our own heart so that people can see how we look on the outside, but the inside, God, can be so damaging and corrupt. And oftentimes, if the inside is corrupt, the action is going to be corrupt. Let us not be like cups that look clean on the outside, but inside that cup is filthy. Help us, God. Oh, Lord, thank you for your abounding mercy and your steadfast love. May we join in into what you are saying so that we can have a pure heart before you and before the people of the world that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Mwah! You just been kissed this morning. I pray, brothers and sisters, that you will go back to read Psalms 51 and take those points that David was saying and allow yourself to go forward because I'm telling you something. God loves us so much. He does. He know where we at. He know our actions. He know what we said and what we ain't saying, why we do what we done. And sometimes you try to figure out why in the world I say that? Why in the world did I do that? Check your heart. You will always find why you said it, the things you say, and why you do the things you do. It's because of the heart. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson on this marvelous Monday. May you enjoy the favor of the Lord because he loves us unconditionally. Have a great day in Jesus.